Until now, we have been learning Metal, the 3D graphics framework from Apple, by writing code inside Xcode Playgrounds. It's time to leave this little sandbox and turn our code into a full-blown application we can compile for Mac, iPhone or iPad. First, we open up Xcode and create a new SwiftUI project. Now we have a working application to use as a base for our Metal app. As you can see, our app's UI is described declaratively in code using a framework named SwiftUI. This is an excellent moment for some history lessons about programming on Apple platforms. Back in the day, before the Swift language even existed, the official language for programming on Mac or an iPhone was Objective-C. It is a quirky mix of the C programming language and a small talk like approach to objects. The UI framework used for developing Mac apps was AppKit. Its iOS equivalent is named UIKit. We still see both of these being used today. This is important because the MetalKit view, or MTK view, is a part of UIKit, or AppKit on Mac. After creating Swift, Apple engineers began to work on a new UI framework named SwiftUI. This modern approach to UI design uses code instead of graphical interface builders. It dramatically simplifies the process, makes collaboration easier for multiple developers, and allows for better handling of data dependencies and data flow. This is all very nice, but since the MetalKit view is not a part of SwiftUI, we will need to implement an intermediate object that lets us use it in the context of that modern UI framework. That will cover displaying the view in our app, but we also need to modify our approach to rendering. When using playgrounds, we set up all the required metal objects, that is our command queue, command buffers, rendering pipeline and so on, then issue the render call, and that was it. When building an actual application, we need our rendering to happen more than once. More like 60 times per second. It does not matter that our triangle is stationary. Very soon, in the following tutorials, we will introduce movement and we'll expect the view to constantly refresh. We don't have to set up all the metal objects when rendering each frame. Some of the objects are relatively expensive to make and should be created only once. The others are lightweight wrappers and it's perfectly fine to recreate these in every frame. So to sum up, we need to embed the metal view in the Swift UI hierarchy and we need to split our rendering tasks into the ones that can be done once and the ones that need to be done every frame. Let's get to work. First, let's change our target device to see how everything looks on an iPhone. To show our MetalKit view in the Swift UI hierarchy, we need a structure that conforms to the UI view representable protocol. This may sound a bit scary, but all it means is that our structure needs to implement two functions that will be called by the Swift UI framework when it needs to create or update our view. Because there will be no interaction between our view and other Swift UI views, we can leave the update UI view empty. In the make UI view method, we create our metal kit view. Back to our content view, we replace the defaults generated by Xcode with metal view. We can add some solid color below our view using ZStack. If we change the color of our metal view for a moment, we can see it's indeed visible and centered. It doesn't render anything though, so let's change that. There are two ways to implement rendering with MTK view, subclassing it and overriding relevant methods or using a delegate. I prefer the second method as it gives us a clear separation of concerns. We create a separate object that does the rendering and point MetalKid's delegate property to that object. Let's create a new Swift file named Metal Renderer. Here we declare a class that implements our delegate protocol. There are two methods that we need to override. Drawable size will change is useful when updating our shader calculations based on the changing view size. For this tutorial we can leave it empty. The draw function is where the rendering takes place. As I mentioned, we don't need to set up all the required metal objects in the render call. We can do it earlier 
for example in the initializer. The two objects that can be set up once and then used many times in rendering are the vertex buffer and the pipeline state. The pipeline state object can be especially costly to create, so it's better to create it once. It is also a good practice to set up the command Q just once and then use it repeatedly in the rendering process. We will also need a reference to the metal device to pass it to the metal kit view. Before we move on with rendering, let's create some data to hold our vertices. Create a new Swift file named vertex.swift. Here we paste the vertex structure from the previous tutorial. This looks like a great place to declare the default vertex descriptor for an array of vertices. Check out my previous metal tutorial if you are unfamiliar with vertex descriptors. Now back to our render. For our triangle, we create a constant array of vertices with our sample data. This array is initialized in line, but our device, common queue, vertex buffer and pipeline state constants do not have a value. This won't compile. We need to initialize all the structs constants in line or in the initializer. To keep the code clean and handle errors gracefully, we create static helper methods to do exactly that. Note that we could eliminate repetition here by creating a templated function, but I don't want to introduce generics, trailing closures and other Swift language details at this point. Let's keep things simple. After the functions are ready, we can use them in the init method to set up our constants. Since we have a method to create the vertex descriptor for the vertex array, we use it and store the result in the descriptor variable. This will be useful when creating the pipeline state object. A small typo fix and we can continue. The vertex and fragment shader functions are crucial components of the rendering pipeline. Let's create a new metal file and paste the shaders from the previous tutorial. We no longer need to store the shader code in a string. We can have a separate metal file with syntax highlighting, error reporting and all the good stuff. Including the metal file in our project ensures it's compiled and put in the default metal library. We can retrieve this library from the device object, which we do in our metal renderer structure. Now, with the vertex descriptor and the library of metal functions ready, we can prepare the rendering pipeline. We set the vertex function, the fragment function and the vertex descriptor, remembering to set the pixel format too. Previously, we used the property from the metal kit view, but we can use the default value here. And finally, we create the pipeline state object, which will be used for rendering. When rendering, we can encounter various errors. Some of these can be ignored, like the drawable not being available. If this happens, we will skip the frame. If we fail to create a command buffer or encoder, we probably messed something up when setting up our metal objects in the initializer. So this warrants a fatal error. With the possible problems out of the way, we prepare our rendering commands and draw our triangle. The final step is to use the renderer as the metal kit view delegate. We head to the metal view Swift file and create a new state variable holding our renderer instance. The state annotation is a Swift property wrapper. This is a huge topic, certainly outside of the scope of this tutorial. But in short, using state here tells Swift not to destroy the renderer object even when the view object is recreated. In the makeUIView function, we first set the clear color. Then we pass the metal device to the view and set the view's delegate property to our object. Now we can run the app and enjoy rendering inside a SwiftUI application. There is one more thing left. If we switch the target device to the Mac, the compilation fails. That's because UIKit and AppKit use different prefixes for their objects. Instead of UIView, we need to write NSView. UIView representable becomes NSView representable, and so on. To handle it elegantly, we will use extensions. 
This is like declaring variables or methods in a given class or struct in two places. Our primary definition contains the renderer variable and the makeMetalView function, while the extension deals with the delegate methods. Now we can use ifdefs to generate a different implementation for macOS. And there it is, our first Metal app working on iOS and Mac. Thanks for watching.